All right. Welcome back. Crew call with the scooters or scooter one. Courtney's <laughs> off doing something. I don't know what she's doing. Actually, she's on a uh, conference call that I probably should be on, but it's okay because I'm here with my very, very dear friend, Jeremy Raymer. Ah, <laughs> with gloves on. You're in your studio. And you <laughs> I think that's pretty amazing. normal for me. It is. It absolutely is. All the spray, all the spray paint. So Jeremy is this amazing muralist. And I know I say amazing and excellent all the time, but I, it's absolutely the truth. And he has oh, thank you. several murals up all around Pittsburgh. And you have murals kind of all over. Um, and the first time I was introduced to your work, um, Stone took me down to the Strip District to see these etchings um, that you had done on these windows, which you did not keep, which I'm still upset and salty about. Um, <laughs> So that was the first time. And then all of a sudden it was like, we went by your houses and then I had my friend Jesse figure out how to get me so I could meet you. And then I just became like a stalker and now I'm just a friend. So that's, <laughs> that's usually how it goes. <laughs> exactly. And um, we commissioned you to do a piece for uh, a company I previously worked for. Yeah. That. One of my earliest. Oh, and so it was amazing. Of course, like during the moment I brought my dad out, I was like, you have to come meet him. This <laughs> God bless my dad. He was like, okay, Jennifer, we'll just go. So <laughs> how are you? That's like the whole backstory, but how are you? Um, you know, just like everyone else, uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. i um, trying to make changes to the plan with some, um, you know, things that I've kind of got have come up and have been put on hold either indefinitely or just have no idea if projects are going to be going now at this point or not. So just doing the best I can. Unfortunately, you know, way back when, when I kind of started my practice, artwork was my therapy really. So it was like my release, my kind of, you know, getting away from things and kind of just focus on that. So it definitely helps me in that regard too. It's fortunate, you know, I'm still got that creative drive in me want to get out every day all day long and just you know make new stuff to share basically well i've been watching it of course because you know i'm like oh, <laughs> and it's amazing but how so i don't know if everybody knows your backstory because you actually left corporate uh to yeah i did um i did the corporate thing for a really long time actually um you know i went hometown boy university of pittsburgh on two different occasions i went for uh originally for bioengineering my concentration was biomechanics Worked in quite a few research labs at the University of Pittsburgh, um, quantifying mechanical properties of bioprosthetic heart valve materials. And, um, you know, and then I stayed around in Pittsburgh for a little bit. And then I ended up moving out to San Francisco Bay Area um, for about five years. I really wanted a job in bioengineering and there was only a few companies here. And my dad had moved out to a small town um, about 45 minutes outside of San Francisco called Bellinas, little mm -hmm. surfer town. Super cool, super chill. So, you know, I basically kind of had a place to stay. I had nothing lined up whatsoever. I, I was working as a thermophysical engineer here in Pittsburgh and that position, I was supposed to be able to like do some design work on new uh, machinery and that really wasn't the exact situation I was hired into. So I ended up resigning, packed up my Honda Accord <laughs> it was back in the day I had my trip tick printed out from AAA. <laughs> there was no GPS then. With all the stamps on it, construction, <laughs> construction, construction. <laughs> yeah. And then I, uh, you know, headed west. First night I was in uh, St. Louis, got to see the Great Arch. The uh, next night I headed um, to Copperhead Mountain, a little bit outside of uh, Denver, Colorado. Stayed with a college friend's brother. Then I ended up uh, sleeping in my car near the uh, Great Salt Flats in Utah. And then on the fourth day, it was a fast trip. I was uh, crossing that line into California and uh, met my dad, lived in Bellinas for a few months. Within nine days, I got an engineering job out there. And uh, then I had moving into San Francisco proper, lived there for a while. Um, you know, I kind of had a multitude of jobs on several levels. I likened myself to Homer Simpson. I've had a lot of jobs. Um, you know, I was a thermophysical engineer, I moved out there, and then I was an R&D technician at Hankel Aerospace, doing uh, physical and chemical analysis of like structural adhesives and priming systems for aerospace applications. Then I became a forensic biomechanical engineer, kind of CSI type stuff, where I would do accident construction, injury causation and analysis. 
And then I was at Chevron, a uh, research and design engineer doing process engineering on different uh, fuel streams, jet, diesel, liquefied propane. I'd look at the um, adsorption and absorption removal of uh, nitrogen and sulfur from these. I'd basically build mini refineries and run like GCMS equipment and do analytical stuff on that. So artwork was never really like the forefront, but when I moved out there to get back to that in 2005, I had um, taken my oil paints with me um, that I had left over from one college class I had taken um, at the behest of a drawing professor, actually. I never really thought about painting. And I had taken a few art classes and my drawing two professor around the end of the semester was like, we are doing uh, a drawing exercise. And for whatever reason, he stood in front of my sketch pad and he's like, you draw like a painter, you should paint. So I gotta thank him for that. I, I don't know what showed him that, but that's kind of what started everything. What was his name? I honestly, I don't remember, unfortunately. And funnily enough, we butted heads quite a bit during the class. Like, um, you know, he actually gave me some of the nicest compliments, but we also butted heads. Another drawing I had done once in uh, Oakland, it was a uh, bowed branch and uh, like a butterfly wing. And he said he could write a novel about it. You know, I don't know, for whatever reason, he saw something that was there and uh, just kind of, you know, after a decade plus kind of transition into that's what I get to do full time now. Um, so basically, while I was in San Francisco, I did small scale painting, um, pretty much all oil work on canvases, um, some of the same subject matter. Um, and there's an old Twiggy of mine, so that 50s, 60s, classical beauty, mods, you know, kind of that look I like to go for, antique photography, scientists, engineers were um, still prevalent back then. And, um, you know, I kind of did my first art show out there. And, you know, I basically 20 to 30 hours a week, starting all the way back in 2005, pretty much. I kind of been practicing ever since. And then, uh, lo and behold, never thought I'd come back to Pittsburgh. Got a really good job offer. So February 2010, I found myself back here. And um, at that point, I was kind of like an IT division manager for an electrical contracting company doing a uh, low voltage design uh, work and project management. And um, in conjunction with that, I ended up having to go back to Pitt again too. So I went back for electrical engineering the second time and did power systems analysis. And um, during that time, I still oil painted. Um, that was from 2010 to 2013. And then in 2013, um, I ended up visiting my sister who lives down in uh, Boca Raton, and my brother-in-law and her had mentioned Wynwood Walls, and they're like, oh, you, you really need to check this out. Second Saturday of each month at that time, they had a huge you know, street party, basically, food trucks, and I just so happened to be there on that second Saturday, so we went down, and you know, anyone who's ever seen or visited knows it's one of the epicenters for street art murals in the US, just blown away by the size, the variety, everything about it. Um, I basically came home and bought Montana Gold, my first Kansas spray paint, and started scaling up on the side of my house. You know, first like a four foot by six foot, um, then a six foot by eight foot, and a little bit bigger and bigger. First two years I spray painted, really had no idea what I was doing. You know, no one taught me. I was using the wrong caps, you know, a lot of YouTube, a lot of trial and error, but you know, kind of kept. So you're spraying your house. What do your neighbors say? And they're like, uh, we didn't sign up for this, for this. We're going to be like on a ladder, like spraying. You know, fortunately, I live right on, at that time, I lived right on the edge of Lawrenceville in the Strip. So I only had one residential neighbor who I could have did whatever I wanted. He wouldn't care at all. And yeah. basically, it was all industrial neighbors and industrial neighbors around me. Yeah. Uh, Fudgy Wudgy's factory used to be right next to me. So in the mornings, Sometimes it smelled like I was stepping into my Graham's kitchen. I could smell fresh brownies all in the air or smell like a thousand gallons of molten butter in there. It was, it was pretty nice, actually. So Amazing. that was uh, random. And, you know, um, one or two times way back then, um, someone complained about something. I had painted a herd of buffalo on the sidewalk a long time ago, and someone bitched about that. And the task force came through and ended up uh, power washing them away. But, you know, more and more, People kind of started to take notice, and then the warehouse owner across the street was like, you know, you covered your house. Do you kind of want to start to cover my building? I was like, damn straight I do. So, 
<laughs> basically I threw a Hedy Lamar piece up there and just kind of got started going down one side. This is at on 35th Street between Mulberry Way and Charlotte Way. Yeah. And then I kind of went up to the alley and kind of kept doing piece after piece after piece. It's basically like a huge practice space for me. And I kind of always rework it. And, you know, if I have a concept I want to play around with, I'll get out there and do it. Or on occasion, you know, sometimes I'll have um, special requests. Um, there was an engagement piece down there. Two people had connected over my artwork. So I did a special piece for them, a red heart and a key. And it was um, personalized to them. So they went out saying, oh, let's go see the new uh, Raymer pieces. And they ended up uh, getting engaged right there, which is pretty amazing. And there's other uh, wedding day photographs. It's crazy to see, you know, all the people that have connected through my artwork over the years and still now and a little bit more and more each day and each week out here. So basically, you know, I, I've been doing murals in my spare time um, in uh, 2014, maybe now. I had basically ended up at Westinghouse, um, okay. which was kind of like a dream job for me. I was, uh, my last position there, I was a senior test engineer, uh, test lead in the safety system department, doing like um, hardware and software, INC uh, testing for uh, a power plant design in uh, the UAE. And basically my, my system was kind of the end of the line. So if all the other safety systems failed, my uh, system would monitor like 21 some thousand odd signals of temperatures, pressures, fan speeds, uh, turbine status, all kinds of data from all over the plant. And it would basically look and see and it would put the plant in a safe state to prevent like a meltdown basically. So it was definitely a little bit different than what I do now. You know, if I mess up there, you know, bad, very bad things are going to happen. Right. So, you know, I was at Westinghouse and, you know, basically a year and a half away from kind of becoming a principal engineer and kind of having that golden ticket engineering wise. Um, it was the best position I had um, ever. But, you know, I, for whatever reason, this art was always at the back of my mind and it was always at, um, something that I was always thinking about and virtually. Did your sorry, Jen, go ahead. No, that's okay. Did your mom or dad paint? Your, I know your brother um, is. So. Wow. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of creatives in my family. Um, you know, painting wise, um, my dad was an antiques restorer and collector. Oh. And um, when we grew up, he completely restored an 1800s farmhouse, you know, down to the floors, exposed beams, exposed brick. I mean, it's a work, that was a work of art in itself. Yeah. Um, master level woodworker, worked on some phenomenal pieces in his career. I've had the opportunity to assist him a little bit doing that. Uh, my mom, you know, not paint um, for, in the sense of on canvas, but she would um, do um, stenciling. Oh. So she would do like kind of primitive style, um, like maybe like a Quaker pattern. So she would do custom stencils, you know, in a different sense, but on the same level that I did right. in our house back then. She was very creative. Um, my uncle, my uncle Jerry, J. Wagner Potts, amazing um, ceramic artist. Yes. He's actually a kiln engineer and designer, so we definitely have that vibe of the engineering background and also, you know, the artistic creative side as well. So when you decided to leave all of this very specific, like this very specific job and this very specific thinking, your family was supportive, weren't they? I mean, they were like going... Oh, um, you know, there was a little bit of trepidation there, obviously, you know, I've committed, you know, seven plus years of my life. Um, you know, work my ass off basically to kind of get to the position I wanted to. And it was like, I kind of kept thinking all along through this course of my career, I'll make more money, I'll be happy. I kind of have this position, I'll be happy. And it didn't matter, I, I got it and it still didn't matter. And the only thing that really brought me joy was the artwork. Um, so after two years at Westinghouse, I was going into my annual review meeting in April and literally up to the second before I hadn't decided a hundred percent. You know, I went in thinking I got some momentum going with art. I'd really like to have the opportunity to be able to focus on art 70, 80 hours a week instead of 30, 40. And it's kind of the, the secondary thing I get to do right. and kind of have to change my mindset after, you know, working 40, 50 hours a week, for kind of high level, high stress engineering job. And, over that summer, we were basically gonna be on mandatory 60 to 70 hour weeks um, in perpetuity to finish the um, secondary and tertiary designs, um, evaluations of the software and to get it 
um, verified and validated and out there and certified. And I knew that that was going to completely halt any artwork activity. And, you know, I basically, as soon as the, the review meeting started, I butted in. I was like, you know, I, I kind of got to tell you guys something. I'm, I'm going to resign and, you know, I'll do a solid transfer of uh, info over with you guys. I stayed about eight weeks after, finished everything that was on my to-do list and transferred um, all of my game knowledge over to the rest of the team. And at that point, I basically had, honestly, like one, two projects on the books. I didn't have any security whatsoever. So, you know, go from, you know, having a nice paycheck, uh, benefits and everything to like, I'm just going on hope and a whim here and just have faith in myself that it's going to kind of unfold and projects are going to keep coming along and I'm going to keep getting better like I planned. And, you know, I really couldn't have written it out any better the way that it played out. You know, we're coming up on four years right now. Mm -hmm. May 6, 2016 will be my four year anniversary being self-employed. Um, thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, kind of we're in a situation now where the entire year had been planned out already and that's not really the case and you know just like engineering a lot of times I've been tasked with doing things that had never been done before or very difficult things and kind of figuring out on the fly so I always rely upon that experience to kind of get me through these times where it's like I don't know exactly what I'm going to do but I have faith in myself yeah. um, kind of reevaluate pivot and um, you know just kind of alter the plan as we go along. Well, I think some people would probably know your Robert, Roberto Clemente piece over on the north side. And you have a couple pieces. You did the Mac Miller, um, the beautiful piece down in the Strip District on Bloom Gardens flowers. Bloom and Garden, yeah. yeah. Um, which is one of my favorite pieces ever. <laughs> Every time I go past it, I stop and then I like turn. And <laughs> Michael Latinero studio is real close to there too. So I'm like, I go slow anyhow because I'm starting to see if he's like has anything new happening and I stop and <laughs> say hi to you. I just, I love seeing that. But uh, so you're, you had projects lined up this year. What was the, when did you start getting calls that things were going to be stopped or pushed or on pause? Um, you know, I was actually, I had a West Coast and international trip planned for months. I had walls I've been working towards and had lined up um, in LA. I had a really nice wall in the Mission District in San Francisco, and then I had um, options to do another wall in the North Bay and also in Mill Valley. So that would all have been California, wow. LA area, and then I was going to travel up to SFO. My dad still lives in Sonoma, so I was going to get to spend a week with him. Mm -hmm. And I also had my first international wall lined up in a, a restaurant um, in Bangkok, and you know, Right before I decided to still go to LA, I was like, at this point, that's where we're, things were kind of escalating a bit. Yeah. I, had, I had cut out Thailand, but I was still planning to do um, LA and SF, um, North Bay Area. Yeah. So on the 10th, I had flown out of Pittsburgh, had a layover in JFK, land in LAX. Um, fortunately, I've been able to connect with uh, another Pittsburgh um, artist, Matt Gondak, over the years. Amazing guy, meteoric garage, just inspirational his story, kind of how he's starting out and where he's at now. He's kind enough to let me stay at his studio in the fashion district, kind of make some of these trips like this uh, feasible and possible. And, um, you know, two days in, it's like when stuff really kind of started to hit the fan and I was like, all right, you know, I kind of got to cut everything. So I ended up finishing my piece down there and did another smaller one. And then on the 13th, I was supposed to fly up to SF and that got canceled and on the 15th i ended up coming back to pittsburgh um, through chicago and then i got here and basically you know since i was through three of the really worst zones self-quarantined for about two weeks you know it took a few days to kind of evaluate and process what's going on and then kind of got right back to work formulating a game plan and maybe about a week or two after that so around the 20th or so i was like you know it's kind of the point where I know we all don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I kind of need to start to get an idea of what's going on with these projects, reduce scope, reduce timeline, push timeline. So, you know, basically with over the last two weeks is kind of where I really started to get a good idea of what's going to happen for the rest of the year. 
Now, will your Thailand uh, restaurant piece still happen at the back half of the year, do you think? Or so, the semi-fortunate thing about that, um, yeah, tentatively right now, we have pushed it back. I'm going to go out the last week in November. Okay. And um, if I was going to go out now, the temperature could have been about 110 Fahrenheit, which is really hard to spray paint in. Yeah. So... Um, and I was only going to be able to get to go for two weeks as well. So it was going to be really rushed. If it, and assuming I get to go in the fall, I'm going to go for five weeks now, I'll basically be out there end of November. I'll get to kind of experience the surrounding a bit, uh, take up the culture, you know, enjoy the food and see the sights a little bit um, on a more, you know, mix of uh, business and uh, pleasure to get, get out there then. And temperature wise, it's amazing, like 70s every day. So there is, um, you know, good rationale to kind of push that trip back. So yeah, that still is in the works. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. I mean, that's San great. Francisco as well, too. You know, we'll see okay. uh, hopefully over the summer as well. And realistically, you know, it may be that I end up doing that in the fall because that's kind of like a jumping point. You know, I'll kind of do the West Coast visit my dad, relax for a week, and then head out to Bangkok from there. So that's okay. kind of like a, you know, a moving target. We'll see what happens through the rest of the year, but definitely still plan to get out there and do that. Now, what about other projects that you're working on now? Because you you were selling some of the Roberto Clemente prints um, through your Instagram, but are you doing anything else? Because you've done t-shirts before. I mean, you've had, so how is, how is that working? Are you still- um, You know, the t-shirts right now, I haven't um, opened those back up. I mean, to be honest, there's not a huge margin on them. I love doing them. They're yeah. super cool to do. But in terms of what I'm doing right now, it's kind of like a, a balance of time. And I do I still have projects going on. Um, really cool yoga studio. Uh, amazing concept behind them. Aether Yoga's open up downtown. That client's amazing. We're still a go. I actually have calls with uh, him and his uh, social media person after this. So, um that is going to be my most uh, ambitious commission to date. It's going to be like uh, about an eight foot, nine foot tall by 20 foot long um, triptych or um, four panel piece. I don't, we're going to see how we have to break it down. We change things a little bit, but it's uh, featuring gods and goddesses from the uh, altar of Zeus or Pergamon altar and um, kind of touches upon some of the, the ideals and uh, core misses of their business, which they have an amazing I mean, I'll let uh, Tyler and them explain it at another time, but their, their air purification system is just off the charts. And the central aspect of the piece, I had, um, by random happenstance, uh, looked at some stuff I had used for reference before, Greek gods and goddesses. And um, air quality is, you know, one of the number one things that uh, they're, they're going to be offering down there, um, purif purified air. And I looked in, to see if there would happen to be a god or goddess of, you know, the air or breathing or something like that. And lo and behold, one of the primordial gods, uh, Aether, Ether is the embodiment of the upper celestial air breathed by the gods. So it was like, oh, like just <laughs> perfect. Like this is the core element and we build yeah. off it. And it's going to just be, you know, some people have seen some of my other stencil style pieces, kind of like a, the Virgin Mary triptych I had done for Duquesne University, kind of in that same style, but yeah. just yeah. a large and more grandiose um, scale. So that'll be a fun one. That one's um, kind of gearing up to getting um, full force next week. Um, another project on the south side, the Highline Project, um, kind of in the designing phase right now, or planning rather, designs are done. Uh, yeah. One more needs finalized. So should be getting out there soon for that one as well, which will should carry me through the summer. And fortunately, you know, it's amazing. Pittsburgh um, comes together in times of need. I really appreciate everyone's support. Um, the Clemente print sale did, you know, it was amazing as I could have expected. It basically sold out all 50 of them. A lot of hand embellishments. A um, few more commission requests have come in. Some other small scale um, mural projects. So kind of working on all that. I'm always evaluating new projects if anyone's interested, you know. Hit me up through my Instagram, um, Facebook, email. I answer it all. I'm basically a one-man show. Um, always reach out, you know, small scale to large scale. People don't realize a lot of times that I only do or think I only do exterior large scale murals. Now I do interior. I paint it on RVs. Basically any paint that will hold, uh, any surface that will hold paint, I'll paint on it. Um, small scale wheat paste, 
uh, paintings, whatever, what have you, reach out to me. I'd be happy to evaluate a project. Well, I think people would be surprised to know that you've done a lot of restaurant work. Um, yeah, a lot of restaurant bars, yeah. um, Cinderlands, uh, Fish Nor Fowl, um, Tadia, PGH, both commissions down there. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to utilize um, antique materials as canvases a lot. You know, that's definitely an ode to my mom and dad and being surrounded by antiques over the years and kind of be able to provide you know, a unique substrate and add layers and it kind of gives like this whole narrative to the piece there. Uh, the people down at Talia wanted something yeah. that looked like it had been outside for a hundred years. Yeah. Um, they wanted some Renaissance style elements in it. So I got some um, galvanized metal that had been used to uh, line a loft in a barn um, mm -hmm. in, in my hometown of Elizabeth Ford. Secondary hometown, was born and raised in Glassport, but I flip flop back and forth. They but uh, basically I got that. What's that, Jen? They love you just the same. <laughs> um, you know, a good friend of mine, um, Stephen, out of Route, Route 56 Salvage, who's actually done a lot of the interiors for restaurants around here. Amazing sourcer for um, architectural design elements. He had this metal. So I went out there. We basically took sections of it, chopped it up, pop riveted it together. And then we had this awesome six foot by seven foot canvas that we uh, ended up adhering to some old um, barn beams. And then I, you know, scrubbed the, the heck out of it and then got the paint, painting on top of it. Um, did a piece down in uh, the District Hotel too. Yes, um, That was one kind of seldom seen. It's way up above the bar on, mm -hmm. on the opposite side um, of, uh, or the Whale Restaurant down there. So um, Stack Burger and Bar, Bill Murray piece I've done in the Oakland one. Aspen Wall, three for Manny's. It's kind of hard to remember at this point. I've been fortunate. Legion Open, is that how you say it? With the DeChance groups? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's my showcase piece. Unfortunately, they haven't opened yet. and No one's gotten to see it in person. But the Double Dragon down at uh, Gaijin, yeah. I mean, I can't wait to see when uh, the Chance group gets that open. I put about 400 hours into that piece. And the level of detail is insane compared to anything. You really just got to see it in person. Uh, really proud of that piece and, and the way that it fit in the space and um, standard and custom a local um, design build company did some amazing architectural elements in there too it's just one of the most fascinating and uh, beautiful interior spaces I've seen and the chance is known for his attention to detail and he did not um, skimp on this one what's the other piece um, and then I'll wrap up um, but there's another we where were we we were in Homewood and it was that that speakeasy or the behind, it was like behind that door, you had done a ton of stuff. It was the brewery over Oh, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jake, good friends down at Voodoo Brewery, yeah, Voodoo. Um, down at Homestead. Um, my like second earliest um, mural I consider in the main bar area. Um, uh, there's a Nikola Tess on the ceiling. And then he brought me back in. They had um, renovated some additional space in there for a private tasting room. And I had done like a kind of a Americana brass metallic eagle. And then also, you know, portraits is my mainstay. I love doing portraits. Um, I did a portrait of Mother Jones down there. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. And how do you say, is it Gaijin? How do you say the name of the new restaurant? Gaijin, I believe, is is yeah. uh, my understanding of the pronunciation. I, mean, I think we've been waiting. It was like, why? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's crazy. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, you know, and then actually, you know, they always got a lot of projects going on. Um, Coop the Bill was just about to open, and Gaijin, with its smaller size, kept getting pushed. And then, you know, back in January, it was like, we're opening in March. Yeah. And then we got hit. So who knows for the time being, yeah. but eventually it will be. And I can't wait for people to get out and join the restaurant and uh, enjoy the, the piece down there too. And especially because they've done so much for the city. I think just, again, there's so many amazing restaurant tours. That yeah, amazing. Amazing. Even, amazing. even the smaller things. And there's some really nice little pockets opening. I was happy when Carmi's moved to the south side from the north side. I was like, thank you for being on our side. <laughs> <laughs> So very happy about that. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. I know, of course, it's sad that she couldn't be with you, but I am so happy that I get to see Sorry, you. Sorry, I said hello. See you next time. Yeah, can I throw in one more thing? Yes, of course you can. So, um, you know, kind of with everything going on, it's, it's been amazing. I've seen a, a lot of response from artists getting out there and finding ways to help other artists. Um, knowledge transfer is definitely key. And, 
you know, even not that long ago and even still now, like on occasion, I'll DM an artist, you know, I consider bigger than me and like ask a tip or trick um, question about something they've done, techniques or whatever. And it's amazing. More often than not, they'll, they'll take the time and get back to me. And, you know, I try to do that myself too. And I've definitely done that over the years. People will shoot me a message and try to give uh, a detailed response. But I, I've always wanted kind of like one central area for all this. And um, I've been kind of wanting to get um, an Instagram TV channel up and going. So I finally got that rolling this last week. Uh, basically, my only channel is going to be on there called Raymer TV, which is kind of a continuation um, and evolution of a project I had been messing around with over the last two years we're basically taking some prank um that's a drippy ink and going around on discard tvs and writing raymer so you know you could consider that the analog version now we're kind of the, the digital version mm -hmm. so it's going to be an area where you know i, I love doing my time lapse as i always love flip books as a, as a kid so it's kind of like a digital evolution of that but primarily um i'll be doing uh tutorials on there um so people always ask me you know how do you make murals and you know at a core basis, it's, it's like approaching any piece of artwork, but you know, I'll kind of talk about the entire process from law evaluation to design to materials, um, tips and tricks for spraying, laying out, stuff like that. Um, how do I utilize um, stencils in my works? How do I create stencils? How do I do my sublimation printing? Um, product reviews there as well. And um, I got a nice little uh, tool I'll be releasing as well, something that will be utilized for the. Uh, Adobe Suite and um, tutorials will be coming up with that regard as well. That will be available for purchase on a sliding scale and even down to free um, for artists who don't have the means to purchase it right now. Um, so that will be coming out in another week or so. I was able to connect with my old um, assistant. Caroline's amazing. We've been able to do this project completely remotely and digitally. So I have her working on that at her place. Um, they're basically customized swatches. Um, which is basically like a customized color palette for the yeah. Adobe Suite. Um, a little more info will be coming out about that and videos on the Instagram TV, which is all um, accessible through my Instagram. That's kind of, you know, my diary, um, you know, finished works, videos, and the Instagram TV link is on there now, right below my followers on the main page. Yeah. There's a little TV. Yeah. And then also as I put content up, you'll get a free view post and you can link back to the Instagram TV to see uh, videos up to about 10 minutes or so. And there'll be random shit on there too. Who knows? Maybe I'll do some uh, recipes too. Cooking's my other passion. So you never know. And yeah, that's a good thing about Raymer TV. You never know what you're going to get on there. Who knows? <laughs> I love that. It'll be like how to make chocolate chip cookies. I'm actually ready for this. Hold on. I, can, I, have, some, I have some paint. So I'm ready. I mean, I, we have our... Oh, nice, have nice. We're, we're ready to go. So I'm ready. We'll definitely uh, we'll be reviewing some 94. That's one of my favorite brands, Montana Gold, Montana Black. I'll talk about the caps I like, how I do certain things, and um, you know, hopefully share some knowledge and you know have a nice place out there for one dedicated resource of uh, tips and tricks that I've uh, learned through trial and error over the last six seven years. Still learning every day now though. It's uh, well, it's things change, and it's just so great to learn. And this community, I think the Pittsburgh art community is one of the best. I you know it's pretty exceptional and and you're one of the reasons for that so thank you oh, thank you thank you yeah, absolutely absolutely so thank you jay and i will talk to you soon i'm sure i hope Great so to see you. yeah definitely stay safe please uh, you too okay i'll talk to you later okay bye